This podcast includes information provided by the issuer and does not express the views of the interviewer. This podcast may also include forward-looking statements by the issuer that involve certain risks and uncertainties to its business. Because forward-looking statements are subject to risks and uncertainties, the issuer's actual results could differ from those indicated in this podcast. Welcome to the Planet Microcap Podcast. I'm your host, Robert Kraft, and thank you all so much for the support and for tuning in. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at Bobby K. Kraft, and you are listening to episode 30. If you like what you hear, I would greatly appreciate you rate and review the podcast on iTunes so that more investors can learn about the world of microcap stocks and join in on the conversation. For this episode of the Planet Microcap Podcast, I spoke with Kevin Shea, private investor and member of the Microcap Club. I recently met Kevin at the Microcap Leadership Summit in Chicago, and at lunch with Kevin leading the discussion, we started talking about a topic that I basically knew nothing about, technical analysis. According to Investopedia, technical analysis is defined as, and I quote, a trading tool employed to evaluate securities and attempt to forecast their future movement by analyzing statistics gathered from trading activity, such as price movement and volume, end quote. Think of technical analysis as the opposite of fundamental analysis. However, as you will hear, in microcap investing, one tool isn't necessarily used without the other. The goal for this interview is to learn about technical analysis and how it can be applied as a tool for your microcap investing strategy. Thank you again for tuning in to episode 30 of the Planet Microcap podcast. Please enjoy my interview with Kevin Shea, but first, a word from our sponsor. A comprehensive streaming of market data, research, and portfolio management application for you. QuoteStream is a real-time streaming quotes and research system designed for the day trader, retail investor, institutional investor, both new and old. QuoteStream offers low latency, tick-by-tick data, advanced charting, comprehensive technical analysis, news, and research. With no software to install and no servers to maintain, QuoteStream is the ideal solution for you. Go to stocknewsnow.com and start your free 7-day trial. Click the quote stream banner in the header or real-time quotes in the nav bar to get started building and managing your investments. For this episode of the Planet Microcap podcast, I have Kevin Shea on the program. He is a private investor and member of the Microcap Club. Kevin, welcome to the Planet Microcap podcast. Uh, thanks, Bobby. Good to be here. It's great to have you on the program. And uh, just to, uh, if you'd like, uh, you can call me uh, Mr. Robert Kraft. I know it's the owner of your favorite team. Um, uh, or, or to make it easy, it could, we could keep it as Bobby either way you'd like. Um, <laughs> so to, to start things off, uh, I met Kevin at uh, a recent conference, the, uh, microcap leadership summit. And, uh, we got to talking about a really interesting topic that we definitely have not covered yet on the podcast about technical analysis. But first, before we get into all of that, uh, Kevin, what, what is your background and how did you get started investing in microcap stocks? Well, my background uh, way back when was I'm a degree engineer, and I began working as, uh, in the power generation and renewable energies area way back then. Uh, I moved into a large conglomerate, U.S. conglomerate, in which I created the business division and began selling products and services back then. Uh, I exited that when they wouldn't pay me enough, and uh, I started a a software company uh, during the time when we were still running around with floppy disks. So I ran that company for quite some time and ultimately sold it uh, and then started another company in areas of, of process management and process control in manufacturing and uh, ran that company for a while and sold it to my employees. So I have a background in that and the developing of new businesses along the way. I ultimately ended up in my career as a management consultant. Mm-hmm. And I've worked for quite some time with uh, large companies. I worked with Ford Motor Company, Chrysler, mm-hmm. uh, a few others, and uh, worked with them strategically to uh, evaluate their companies and to offer suggestions as to how they could improve their strategies, things of that type. Pretty heady stuff, pretty mm-hmm. interesting. I spent uh, almost 15 years on and off with Ford Motor Company, so I was able to see how that company changed over time and situations like that. Along the way, I was always investing. Um, 
I was doing on a part-time basis. Of course, it was full-time engaged otherwise. Um, so I was, I've was i been an investor for 30 years or more. You know, got myself uh, into the uh, into the, uh, the dot-com boom and out of it. That was pretty interesting. Uh, but it, those are the those are the backgrounds about where I've been. But recently, what's happening is that um, I I know that my career as a management consultant is going to end at some point in time. It just gets harder and harder to get more engagements uh, along the way uh, as you get older. And I was in a boutique situation where it was just myself, mm-hmm. so I had a career uh, intention of when I exited to enter enter investing full time, mm-hmm. which I did do. And uh, one of the areas of my interest, uh, first off, was in day trading, uh, using technical analysis as the basis. And it's a lot of work. It's just a tremendous amount of work trying to stay on top of everything. Mm -hmm. And I slowly converted over to more fundamental analysis of companies and found that microcaps offered up a much better return on investment, a potential return on investment. And you could get to know the companies, and you could easily, uh, uh, as using my personal background in strategic analysis, uh, strategy analysis, and things of that type, um, I thought that was more along my line so that I could go in and evaluate a company, find out about it, do some due diligence, and really get some uh, insight into the business. Mm-hmm. So my interest in microcaps is uh, brought on by uh, a execution type of uh, an operations type of background rather than a finance background. Mm-hmm. You know. so, so that's where I am now, and I've been investing in, in uh, microcaps probably for the last uh, four or so years. Mm-hmm. And then, and so the, the main topic today is, and you mentioned this in your background, is uh, technical analysis. And, and what I'm curious about, and again, we haven't talked about it literally at all on the podcast. So for right. those, for, So for those who don't know, you know, what is technical analysis and how did you get into and learn about it? Uh, you know, technical analysis to me is basically um, doing some mathematics and some geometries around price movement and to try to use that mathematics, if you want to use it that way, as a means of being able to uh, examine, ferret out, uh, this, you know, um, get into some detail about what the what the stock may or may not be doing. It's, it's certainly not a precise analysis that uses mathematics, but it fit my interest because as an engineer, I tend to go into the scientific side of it. And as I mentioned, I'm not, I'm not a skilled financial analysis. So to me, it, 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 it fit well. Um, the, the, the basis of it is really time, is really mostly trying to assess the battle between the bull and the bear and as a result of price movements set upon the, the, the price movements that are actually a result of that bull bear activity on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. And so the technical analysis, if you really want to look at it, others, if you look at uh, Wikipedia, for example, as a, uh, they will give you a detailed outline of, of uh, what technical analysis is. If you go to stockcharts.com and look into what is technical analysis, you get a little bit different perspective. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think everybody looks at it the same way, is that uh, one of the things that comes into it is you're looking for patterns, you're looking for history repeating itself, you're looking for something in which the price of the stock is, is to some extent observable, um, uh, but not forecastable per se. It's not predictive mm-hmm. type of uh, system, but it is a, it is a tool, and I would only use it as a tool. You know, it's it's not something that's going to be uh, the be all, the mind all, and it's going to make you tons and tons of money. You know, you just have to you know use it as a tool. So I think that so. I think that one of the things that really comes into it is like we talked about uh, a number of different times is that if you can't control your emotions, you certainly won't be able to control them using any sort of mathematics. Mm-hmm. So Kevin, you know, the, the other theory in when it comes to doing uh, research and your due diligence is a uh, fundamental analysis, you know, so what, what's the main difference between the two? Um, do most people use both or is it solely one or the other ways of thinking? I think, I think there's a, by modal nature of it, I think you're right, is that one, different people use different methodologies. Some only use 
fundamental analysis. I only use technical analysis. I try to blend them. Mm-hmm. Um, my investment strategy and my investment style, um, which is, could very well be far, far different than others, um, tends to suit me. Um, my, my investments are not, you know, years of holding. I have not days of holding. I, I, I tend to be either a long-term investor, and that might be a year or two. Um, I might be an investor that finds that I made the, I made a mistake, and sometimes the technical analysis helps me understand that. Mm. So I, I think that for me the balance is there. I mean, as I indicated, my skill set is really in the execution and operations mm-hmm. side of businesses. So. I take a look at what the business is doing, how it's running, how it's being operated, how it's effectively executing. And if I see something that I think is, is beneficial, that becomes part of the reasoning for my selections of a stock. Mm-hmm. Well, I will I will try to watch it I mean, you know, along the way and observe the chart. And hopefully the chart is telling me that my selections was, was good. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, I think what happens is that um, the chart can also reveal pieces of information that you might not have otherwise uh, discovered during your due diligence, and others might have along the way, and as a result, the price of the stock will go down. And again, it's the spool bear thing, and I think those are the things that you can use technical analysis for. And I'll say it again, my strategy and my timing and my time frame will be different from anybody else's. You know, mm-hmm. just I don't follow anybody else's theories and I hope people don't follow mine. Look, what, I want to follow up on that. You know, like for you, you know, what, what does a chart tell you? What are the different things that a chart tells you when you're following a stock that, you know, you might be interested in or, or are already invested in? I think it's two things. Mm-hmm. One is, is, is the flow of information. The information flow, I think, un- underscores much of what's going to go on with regard to the ways bulls and bears react. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody tries to get an uh, information advantage, and they can do so by doing extensive due diligence and the like. The other part of it also is behavior. Um, one of the things that I think practitioners in technical analysis would tell you is that they watch a lot of behavior that's incumbent in the chart. You're just not looking at the at the um, at the pure numbers. You're looking at the reactions of other people to either the information flow that they have or have not, or their own behaviors with regards to in, their inability of being able to control their emotions. Mm-hmm. So, in in that regard, technical analysis, even though I indicated that it's potentially more mathematical in fashion. Um, there are many, and I, I am one that believe that what we're doing is that we're watching psychology uh, that's behind all of the decision making that goes on on a daily, monthly, weekly basis by investors. That they make some very good decisions, make some very stupid decisions. Um, some people make again. Some people operate um, where they get bored. You know, they sit around on a stock for three or four or five months. They get bored. And they exit just to get not bored. They haven't got any patience. Mm-hmm. So I think one of the things that chart off is 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 a is an interesting insight into the psychology mm-hmm. of people um, and the way in which they react to the to the to the uh, information around the, the particular stock. So like for yeah. you, I, sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, but like so for uh-huh. you, so for you, for instance, like let's say for instance, um, you're reading a, a press release or a filing and. You know, and, and to you independently, you think to yourself, okay, well, this looks like um, this looks like it could be good for the company. You know, they uh, another positive quarter, more earnings. You know, revenues are up. You know, growing since last quarter, year over year, and yet maybe you see on the chart that that following day, following that conference call, uh, you know, let's just say take this one example independently, not using anything else. And you and you see that the chart is starting to dip. You know, people are are there's a seller or multiple sellers. You know, so you're starting to see the price of the stock start to go down. You know, as a using your what you know about technical analysis. You know, how do you how do you take in information like that? You know, where you see where there's certain things that you would expect to see, but then don't. You know, what what do you do in those situations? That's 
really that's really a, a good question. And, and my response is that I try to avoid being in stocks if I don't know what the earnings are going to be. Mm. You know, you don't want to be blindsided. Um, what I want to know is I want to know how everything is proceeding, how everything is going along. You know, I work. I, I have a company that I'm following. I've been in and out of it a few times. Axogen, AXGN. That company is just executes marvelously. You know, you would anticipate everything that they do um, is just is just better. And they've got something like 22 quarters of, of continuous growth. You know, you, you don't expect that their earnings are going to suffer along the way. And so I, I, I bake that in, for example, um, so that I'm not anticipating that there's going to be some sort of upset. Am I going to be right all the time? No. You know, but along the way is that I'm, I have more conviction in that than I might in some other companies. Mm-hmm. I, try to, I try to avoid it. And the other thing that happens is that when you have an information event of that type, you know, you oftentimes... As you noted, you oftentimes have a disruption in the uh, in the price chart. You have a, a gap. Okay, prices will gap up. Prices will gap down. <clears throat> those things are, are those things are not predictable by any stretch of the imagination by anybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, whether or not you're a fundamental analyst or even a technical analyst, I mean they, they come out of the blue uh, most often. Um, because because of the the technical analysis side of it really likes to see a continuous flow of, of price information, that big break kind of disrupts the mathematics of it, if you want to use the word mathematics. So it is it is hard. Um, as I said, I try to avoid them if possible. Same thing is true when there is a there is a guidance change, so, you know, prior to an earnings, earnings event. Those disrupt everything. So to that end, I think that people try to uh, – become on the fundamental side, either you know the stuff, you know the company, and you can see it, or on the pure technical side, if somebody is holding for a swing trade, you know, say a couple of weeks or whatever it is, and they want to play the earnings, mm-hmm. they, 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 either want, they either make a, a binary decision, they either play it in or they play it out. I just don't like to go there, personally. So what what's really interesting that I'm, I'm learning right now is that it seems when it comes to using, well, one, it's it m- when it comes to technical analysis, at least for you, you like to use a mixture of both, you know, some traditional fundamental analysis. And, and I think most people do as well. But it seems that what's really crucial to using this strategy is the flow of news. And sorry. OK, you comment on that. <laughs> I have a follow up question. <laughs> It flow, flow of news is, is obvious because it it, it, it it highlights the fact that the company is doing well or they're trying to hide something or it doesn't sound very good. You know, and those, those pieces of information, it's really quite interesting. Um, I think that what happens on occasion is that you may receive that piece of news two to three to four weeks after somebody else has already received it. I mean, let's face it, that's the way it works in the game. And in, in the chart, you're looking at the chart saying, wow, this, this chart's starting to turn down. Okay, I wonder why. And it's not that infrequent that you can see something in the chart that's that's actually beginning to lose momentum. And after the event, you can go back and look at it and say, oh, you know, there's probably there's probably an acquisition of information event that was going on prior to what I saw, and that it occurs because you know, space information is 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 available and it's kind of what's what we're fungible, I guess. Um, so I don't want to use technical analysis to look back in time, you know, but sometimes you can to see that what you didn't observe actually was to some extent already known. Mm -hmm. Um, There are methodologies in technical analysis is particular, is this particular indicator, which is indeed a mathematically derived uh, uh, algorithm. And what you can do is it's, you can actually watch the so-called momentum of the stock, which is a leading indicator. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's 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 remarkable to see how often those things are are, are followed up by either a, a movement in one way or a movement the other way. It's the it's in, it, it's all about information and, and the way people react to it. In many many ways. So you bring up a really good point. I want to hit on that, and that's when it comes to indicators because. You know, you brought up something also where you know it. It's a good. It's easy to look back, 
on the news that came out and you're able to tell, you know, with what happened in the chart. But, you know, you want to also have do your best educated guess, so to speak, you know, about what might happen in this stock potentially using technical analysis. So when it comes to indicators and momentum, you I mean, you also did say that there's very complicated al- algorithms to to calculate this. But like, what do you use? I mean, it, it, do you have your own formula or do you kind of go off like what is out there? I do not create my own formulas. There is, there's a ridiculous number of formulas that you can pick from. That all they're going to do is get you more and more and more confused. Um, the one thing that um, a technical analyst does is they reviews literally tens of thousands of charts and ultimately will come to a particular set of methods that the, the analysts themselves find works with them or for them. Mm-hmm. It's, it's when you use technical analysis and you're jumping all over the place that you lose. Mm-hmm. Um, there are some selected uh, items, uh, for example, in, in technical analysis, we're looking at both patterns as well as indicators, and the patterns are the geometries in the chart. And some people will play strictly on these geometries. You know, for example, the easy ones are, you know, the moving averages. Mm-hmm. Um, when when a stock rises too far above its moving average, the likelihood of what's called reverting to the mean is high. The, high the, the, the higher percentage it is off of the moving average, the more likelihood that you will have a correction. You know, and, and the numbers, if in, 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 you do things like go back and, and do retrospective studies, you can see that these things actually do occur. And there's a lot of people who do these retrospective studies. They will take the last 10 years of data and plug it through their, pl- plug it through their um, algorithms, that their own chosen algorithms, to see how effective their own chosen algorithms might be. Mm-hmm. And this is, this is back testing. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, that's only going to tell you whether or not something in the past happened. The, the one thing, that, as I indicated, is that, you know, I think you were right on the money, is that it's not predictive. If you go and look at um, Wikipedia, they actually call it forecasting. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't even know whether it's good forecasting. It's just, it's another tool. It's, I mean, forecasting is just like a weatherman, you know. Well, I think it's going to rain tomorrow, and the sun's out. You know, I, I thought it was going <laughs> to rain yesterday, but I don't know what the hell happened. You know, so it's, it's a, it can be a forecast or it can be a best guess. Mm-hmm. Now you can you can you can get better and better and better percentages of these things just by observing and reading and the things of that type. Um, my, for example, one of the one of the the, the drop dead rules that I play with is if I'm going to go long run, and don't ever buy if the thing is under the 50 day moving average. I mean, mm-hmm. I mean that's that's a technical analyst looking at a stock. I mean, if I'm going fundamental, I could sit down and say, well, it's a buying opportunity because I think this is the best stock since sliced bread. Okay? Um, or, you know, things of that type. On the other hand, is one has to take into consideration money management. Do you want to be in a stock while it's going down? Mm-hmm. You know, do you want to hold it for a year and a half while it's staying underneath the highest price you just had? Um, so I think what happens is that there are those methods that if you put into place according to your own chosen strategy, um, it, they, they can work. As I mentioned early on, there are some people who are willing to hold five or six or seven years for a stock. I mean, look at look at uh, look at Berkshire Hathaway. Mm-hmm. There are others. There are others who, as I said, get get bored, get uh, impatient, mm-hmm. and they will only hold for maybe six months to a, to a year, even though they pretty much know the company. Mm-hmm. So you know, there's a, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of helpful values that. That you can you can apply. Don't, for example, you know what I look at is that uh, I, I try to buy it. If I'm going to buy something that's advancing, I'm, I like to buy it at the moving averages. It's yeah. Far better exit, far better entry than it is if you bought it 15 percent above the moving averages and now it reverts back to them. You just lost. You know, mm-hmm. you lose money yet, but you're obviously on the downside. Mm-hmm. Um, there are there are certain there are certain. Um, uh, patterns, as I said, that come up that are very interesting. Firstly, you know, whenever a stock breaks out, you know, we all talk about breakouts. I mean, you, know, you can see them all the, all the time. Um, 
stocks break out, and a lot of technical analysts play the breakout. They'll buy the breakout. Um, there are there are subsequent calls. I mean, if you, if you miss the breakout, it oftentimes comes back and tests the high, the previous high again. Mm-hmm. But these are these these are basic rules in TA that help you figure things out. Mm-hmm. Um, there are there are ways that um, you can you can avoid getting out too early, selling out, and then saying to your friends, "I could have should I could have should have held longer." Um, that's a very very hard thing to do if you're a fundamental analyst mm-hmm. and you know that the stock is currently at a good value and you think it's overbought. But as we all know, is that stocks stay overbought can stay overbought for a long time, mm-hmm. and you miss. You miss a huge run because you're making the choice on the on your evaluation. Good, bad, or indifferent. That's what people's strategy is. Mm-hmm. I think if you have a little bit more broader sense for it, maybe add some technical analysis, you might have a better chance of of staying in a bit longer. That's how I kind of see it. You know, how do you, how do you can you, how you can use the two of them in balance. So I, I want to use a lot of the theory that you've just said, and I, and I want to understand how we can apply it to micro cap investing, you know, cause, and two, I already see two, two things right off the bat, you know, with micro caps, some, you know, there's not a lot of news flow and some are, are thinly traded. You know, they don't, they don't trade a lot of shares every day. Um, their, their, their daily averages are quite low. So how then do you apply technical analysis in, let's use these in situations like that? I, I think that the, that the biggest um, debate is can it be applied to thinly traded stocks? Mm-hmm. And I, I won't argue that. It is very difficult to apply it to thinly traded stocks, particularly on days where you have zero shares traded. Uh, what that does is it interrupts, the, it interrupts the flow. It interrupts the information flow. There's no bull and no bear activity at all during that period of time. So how can you gauge what the sentiment is? If you go into other microcaps, say larger microcaps, just sitting under 300 million, and they're doing, say, 125 to 200,000 shares a day, that's much more reasonable. It's much more capable of being able to watch the movement because you have enough flow, you have enough information, you have enough supply and demand going on. Um, the prices are, re- are reacting. The bulls and bears are playing the game. So I think it's a. I, I think. You, I don't think you can discount micro cap stocks per se, but you, I think you have to discount uh, when you think that they're thinly traded. Interestingly enough, on the micro cap club, uh, I'm in a conversation with a couple of fellows, and what we're doing is we're tracking the particular stock, so where food comes from, and there it's a very thinly traded stock. So one of the things that I I posited was that we'll watch it in the weekly. And I, I, I have been doing this now for nine months or so, and, and it's quite surprising how, you know, what I've been able to, to uh, show is that it can work, okay, because some of the things that I forecasted, and again, I don't like that word, have indeed pretty much come true. Um, it's not did act as it might have wanted to. That's, that's, a, as I said, that's, a, that's a thinly traded stock where you, you really determine whether or not it's, it's, it's a, a candidate. Um, it's certainly not a candidate at a daily basis. Mm-hmm. So where technical analysis might help you gain a, an advantage on an exit or an, an entry or an exit on a stock that you really like, I don't know how you would do that in a thinly traded stock. You just got to love it, you know, mm-hmm. to that regard. So I think that when you get into well-traded stocks of the micro cap, I still think it's applicable. Mm-hmm. It's just that it's it's the thinly ones where you got to rely more on fundamental analysis to really you got to just love the story. Really, that's what it sounds like. I, I believe so. Um, I, you know, as I said, I I have been unsuccessful in being able to watch these thinly traded stocks and derive anything from them. It's it seems that it's more you love the thing or you don't. Well, um, well why why, why 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 is that? You know, why why is it difficult? in thinly traded stocks to use technical analysis? Is it, I mean, is it something more than just, you just can't get a read on 
the bulls and bears and, and that, that the sentiment really, or is it, is there something else? Um, it is, it, it's the, it's the, it's the idea of, of, of supply and demand. And it's the, it's the bull bear reactions to news. Um, this, this, I, you know, I think thinly traded stocks have our, have their own retail, um, buyers, mostly retail. Mm. And I, and, and I think that they tend to, tend to see the story more than anything else. So, you're not seeing a lot of a lot of movement, you know. In, in the, on the other hand, it's really quite interesting because you use the word sentiment, mm-hmm. and, and as I said back a little while ago, is that I I think that technical analysis sits on a cusp of behavior and psychology that you can quote unquote read, okay, in the chart. There's an awful lot of people who will support that claim that you can that you can you don't you don't even need to know information in fact the the um, in a minute but the but the interesting thing is is that and I'm the, I believe this as well is that in many cases take a take a mid cap or even a large cap those those things everybody knows everything about them I mean even if they have any benefit of being able to to um, to capture an advantage so what, what can you do to to um, uh, overcome this disadvantage you have, which you, you really you haven't got you haven't got the insight? Uh, technical analysis could very well be that um, that that, that uh, the additional tool that gets you over that you know the it'll get you over that and get you into something else. I'm getting a little bit confused here, but the but then you know, the sentiment. One thing that's really quite interesting on on a lot of small smaller issues is that you can get out to a forum or a Twitter or a thread. I'm not, I'm not going to promote Yahoo. That's, that's really kind of bad. But you can get out to places in which, and even the microcap club, where you get a lot of information flow coming in and out. And you can actually read the people. You can see, the, you can see how things might react uh, a bit because the, you, can, you, can, you are indeed getting some insight into the conversations. And again, whether or not it's Microcap club, or whether or not it's in a conference, or where it is, you're getting you're getting a number of people commenting about this particular stock. I think that that uh, balance of of uh, I feel good about the stock. I'm not really feeling good about the stock. You know, I like it, but geez, I'm going to hold a little bit longer. Those those types of insensitivities with regard to uh, sensitivities with regard to my holding in a and a micro cat club can be observable. It's really quite a study that I, I mean, it's an academic thing to me, and I'm still looking at it. Is can you can you actually go to a, a particular location, hear from a number of participants, get ga- gauge that that uh, reaction of the number of uh, the number of the participants, and see it in the in the chart. I mean, to me, that's a very interesting academic. Uh, element of technical analysis, trying to relate it uh, to sentiment, um, and there are people doing that as well. So it's, it is this interesting uh, people watching or maybe poker playing. I, I don't know what it is. You know, when you're kind of looking at sentiment. Yeah, it's almost it, it's it's interesting because even for I mean now with so much more information out there on microcap stocks, even ones that are seemingly you know undiscovered. Um, the, at least, what I mean by that is like the flow of information on companies that are con- may be considered, you know, undervalued or undiscovered, is that it 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 almost seems like you you can use when you because you I mean let's let's take our pattern. Usually we go we look at the we we enter in the stock on a Yahoo Finance or something, you know, and we look at the price and we start to see what the chart has been doing probably in the last six months to a year, you know. So it's almost like you use technical analysis to kind of give you that first like instant. Okay. All right. This is what's going on. Now I want to see why it traded like that six months ago, you know, or at least for a company that you're interested in, but you're not trying to buy like right, right then and there, you know, um, <laughs> I mean, kind of, right. Well, yeah, it's the old thing about, you know, growth investors versus value investors. I mean, if a value investor sees, Sees that the price of a of an issue has dropped sixty percent, you know, in a year. Then they look at that as a good buying opportunity. Mm-hmm. Okay, so as opposed to a growth guy, growth guys on the other side. Now, I'm, I'm 
if you want to buy it at the bottom, mm-hmm. again, um, there are there are certain parameters and, and certain uh, uh, ways in which you interpret indicators, and certainly uh, patterns or a double bottom or a triple bottom mm-hmm. um, would give you confidence to buy at that bottom. Now, you know whether or not it's totally predictive. It is. I can't say because you don't really know what's going on in the company. It could be going bankrupt. You never know. On the other hand, is that what you can do is you can choose to enter uh, based upon the most likely lowest point. You know, so your entry can be perfect from a technical analyst perspective. If the guy is just buying a good-looking chart, mm-hmm. what that analyst would do is uh, say he buy that two bucks. They may simply put in a stop loss order at 195 because you can be dead, you can be deadly wrong, you know. But at least at least your your money management is pretty good. I mean, if you if you if you were buying a stock at the bottom and you didn't really see it, you say, well, geez, it's at the bottom, but you know now it starts to move up 10, 12 percent, whatever. You buy it then. Now you're in no man's land. You know, you're, you're in a situation where. If it comes back down again, you, you, you're down 12 percent. Then, and how long is it? Going? There, are, there are a number of different things that can actually aid you in trying to make a best entry. Mm-hmm. I think that is one of the things that uh, technical analysis can help you do. Um, as I said, double bottoms and triple, you know, double bottoms, double tops, etc. Things of that type, where the price, the price advances and it drops, and it advances again, and then it drops again. Um, those are indications that uh, the bulls and bears are really at it, and uh, the second time it fails, it means that the bears are in control. Mm-hmm. You know? So, and, and you can watch the volume, of course. And so there are there are others in the technical analyst scheme of things who literally have who only watch price and volume, mm-hmm. so, and because they sit down and say, fundamentally, that's all it's about is is price volume. Mm-hmm. You know, and it, 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 that's. I haven't got there yet, personally. Mm-hmm. So, um, what you just said led into my next question, and and that has to do with, you know, what what are the advantages and disadvantages of using technical analysis? We've gone through a few of both, but I figured we would just bring it all home right here. The I think the advantages are it's a tool that you can put, you know, that you can use. Um, as another means of helping you make decisions, um, it can be it can be effective in money management. I, I think it can be effective in buying and selling at the right times. Um, it might help you overcome some of your boringness. You know, when you start to get bored, um, you can maybe understand it. Those are some of the advantages. Disadvantages. Are, are, you, you use it as a crutch, and you make your decisions strictly on that, and um, you, you misinterpret um, some of the some of the things that are going on. You might very well do it because you haven't been in it long enough. Um, other disadvantages: um, you may see, as I indicated much earlier, you may see too many indicators, and you begin to become overwhelmed by the math of it, by, by the not on the math of it, but be overwhelmed by the choices you have and how you use these indicators and patterns and all this stuff. Keeping it simple is the is the means of being able to overcome some of the disadvantages of too much. You know, so I think those are the those are the other elements. Um, I think the disadvantage is in the in is in the placing too much trust into it. And um, losing losing your edge, losing your strategy, or uh, letting it command your emotion, things of that type. I mean, technical technical analysis should be used to hopefully reduce, quote unquote, eliminate um, much of the emotion that people are playing with all the time. Mm-hmm. So, Kevin, do do you have an experience that you always look back on? That taught you a valuable lesson about investing using technical analysis. Yeah, well, I think we all would agree that we pay our we pay our dues, we pay our college fees again, just by going <laughs> and investing anywhere. Um, the the lesson the lesson 
the, the, the single biggest lesson I think one should take in is if you want to go long, don't buy a stock when it's underneath the 50-day moving average or whichever one you might want to choose. It, 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 the, the trade is the trend is your friend. And I believe that that's the case. I think people are, are wanting to buy something and they buy it just because it's, it's today. It's, it's, you know, I got to do something. Um, so you, it's very simple. In fact, I, I didn't, I didn't come up with this. This is something that came out of a book that I would recommend if somebody was interested in doing it. It comes out of a book, Elder Trading for a Living. Um, and his simple phrase is, is only buy long when the trend is, when the moving average is up and only short when the moving averages are going down. Mm -hmm. And it's funny as hell because I can't, I can't tell you the number of people I talk to who say, yeah, I wish I learned that. And, and they've been doing it for six or seven years. <laughs> as you know, you pay, you pay a price to learn about the, the market. And where, where, whether you pay it in fundamental analysis or in technical analysis is, you know, everybody knows you lose. Yeah. So, so Kevin, we're just uh, about to finish up here. You know, where where can our audience go and find more information about technical analysis and and maybe your thoughts on the topic? Um, technical analysis has been written about for the last fifty years. So there are books and books and books and books on it. Um, many of them pretty simple. Some of them crazy. Um, as I said, I just mentioned. Uh, Elder, E-L-D-E-R, Elders Trading for a Living. I thought that was a pretty remarkable book. Uh, it was pretty concise. Um, much of what I uh, personally have uh, indicated today during our discussion is kind of brought up by that. Um, he talks about sentiment and psychology and things of that type. Um, many of the other books are pretty straightforward and um, easy to read, easy to follow. Uh, I could Literally, there are, this guy, John Murphy, is a, is a, uh, has been writing technical analysis books for quite some time, as, his, as, as has a fellow named Pring, P-R-I-N-G. So there's quite a bit of, of uh, material out there that you can, that you can do. The, I think there is um, one direction people can take, and it requires you to read, li read and interpret literally, let's sit down and say, 5,000 charts before you even invest. That would probably be a wise thing to do. Is you is you started you invest in a ghost uh, account, or whatever they call these days, so that you get some um, training, if you would, do some spring training before you even begin to invest, so that you don't engage in it uh, immediately and, and uh, start misinterpreting everything that you see. Mm -hmm. I think I think those are the things. It's it's just self education um, and awareness of what's going on. I, they're, they're, in, in my view, I don't think that there's much uh, discussion. I have never seen a thread or a forum that is actually specific to, um, to technical, anal technical analysis. However, if you get on Twitter and you want to go in and check out a chart, you will see any number of people evaluating a chart and suggesting this is the time to buy it, yada, yada, yada. Now, um, but I think I think that's it. There's no, of course, there's no college for it. However, there is. Um, I forget what the what the um, uh, what the fin. I don't forget who it is. Whether it's FINRA or what. But there is a there is a. Uh, you can become a, a, a technical analyst with a with a credit with accreditation, uh, and, and be working for somebody in the area. And, and, and you have to take exams and all kinds of things. That type. I, I've never pursued that. I don't even know much. About other than the fact that that exists. <laughs> well, Kevin, thank you so much. I I really learned a lot today. I must say. I'm glad for that, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks again, uh, and uh, we'll talk soon. Okay. Yeah, and uh, send me some tickets, will you? Yeah, no problem. On its way. All righty. Thanks. <laughs> bye. Have a good one. Yeah. Bye bye. 
Thank you all for tuning in to the Planet Microcap podcast, and thank you, Kevin, again for coming on to the program. You can access the podcast by going on to stocknewsnow.com under podcast. Go to podbean.com and search Planet Microcap podcast, or on iTunes and search Planet Microcap podcast. Stay tuned for the next Planet Microcap podcast, where we'll have our next guest to discuss all things microcap. If you have any questions or comments about the podcast, please send an email to info at stocknewsnow.com. I'd love to hear from all of you. This podcast has been brought to you by SNN Incorporated, publishers of StockNewsNow.com, the official microcap news source, and the microcap review magazine. I'm your host, Robert Kraft, and thank you again for joining me on the Planet Microcap podcast. Have a great week, everyone.